It is late March 2020, and with everything going on in the world and not having uploaded in a little while, I figured I might as well make a video just giving you a life update more than anything else. <laughs> Yes, this will probably be boring for a bunch of you, but if you're interested, just stick around. It's gonna get good and personal, so I'm gonna kick back a notch and start with Christmas because that's roughly when I last uploaded. I went with my family on a small Christmas cruise around the European cities. We went to London, to Antwerp, as well as to Amsterdam. When we landed in Antwerp, we took a train down to Leuven, which is a bit south, where my sister was working. It was really nice to see her for the first time in three or four months. It was lovely. Then a few weeks later, actual Christmas Eve and Christmas Day came around. And what's really nice is that she came home the day before Christmas. And for good this time, her position finished and she was back in Ireland, which was a really nice Christmas, have the whole family here. So yeah, for six months, this house was with three people. And that was a bit strange seeing her again and, you know, being in contact. I have to say though, that since Christmas time, I've gotten used to it again and it's pretty much like nothing ever happened. And something that happened at a similar time was unemployment. At the very end of November, my position stopped. It was a temporary position. I didn't really have a say on whether I stayed or not. It was just filling in someone's space. So that was it, that ended. And since that time, I became unemployed. And in Ireland, this is not the worst thing in the world. You see, there are some schemes that help you out with rental, with stuff like that. However, I didn't get on any of them. And I, I did get Job Seeker's Allowance, I believe. And that started at 112 euro, but in the later weeks, it dropped down to 56 euro per week. You might be asking yourself, well, why? Why have I become unemployed? Well, I essentially stopped doing photography or seeking to get photography work. Reason for that is, well, last summer traveling, the whole thing, and I just wanted a break from it. You see, when you're traveling for six weeks on end, always with a camera around your neck and spending literal days nonstop editing, it took me about three months to get everything edited, photos, videos, everything. It was a huge amount of time and mental space taken. And if you're doing that nonstop, you can kind of imagine being a bit bored or sick of it. And yeah, it was interesting, but I decided to just, you know, cut most of my photography jobs. And since I don't do weddings or ever want to, photography wasn't really very profitable in Ireland. So th that's the thing. Not having a car as well really cut me off from a lot of these potential jobs. But anyways, I didn't have photography, so I couldn't make any money. So I just lived on these weekly job seekers allowances. Not too bad. My parents support rent and most of the food, which is lovely. So I didn't really have much to worry about, but yes, it was a bit different. And here's the kicker. In all of this time being unemployed, I have seeked over 40 jobs, applied to them, had interviews where I, roughly 10 some of them, I actually got pretty far through it and it looked like I was gonna be offered the job. However, there was a few office jobs where because I didn't have a full car license for 12 months, I was just denied. I was unqualified for the job, which is pretty ridiculous. I would get it if it's a remote job or if you're driving from place to place. But bear in mind, this is an office job, yeah. That was really interesting, but apparently one of the companies actually disclosed that it's a company policy for insurance, etc. And they don't actually have much of a say, it's just the contract they signed. So yeah, that's annoying. Then a few weeks later, I found a position with Toast. It's actually a lovely job in a charity store. It's unlike most charity stores because it's more boutique in the aspect. Stuff is really nice quality, really, really high standard actually, uh, to think about it. Some of the things actually have tags on them and the prices are very fair. We also stock furniture, appliances, stuff like that. 
and it's a nice job because there's r roughly four or five people in the store at one time, always one on a till, one on the floor, etc. And upstairs there's a, like a nice area where you can pack hampers, a nice canteen, and a massive room of clothes. And here, one of the jobs is to steam clothes. I wouldn't have thought of it, but retail can be really enjoyable and really fun. And this is one of the jobs I'm enjoying. It's only 19 and a half hours per week, but it's absolutely fantastic. The best part about it is that I have four days free currently in which I can essentially find a new job or just do my own thing, whether it's photography, whether it's just exploring, going on weekend adventures, etc. I have so much free time, man, because of I don't have this mental stress of money. It's comforting. Good coffee is always amazing. Moving on to a few other things in life. Earlier this year, roughly two and a half months ago, I ended up getting braces. I only have them on my top jaw at the minute, but they're interesting. You see, I've wanted to have better teeth for quite a while, especially making YouTube videos and constantly being on camera is one of these things that brings your physical flaws, there aren't really flaws, but most people view them as flaws, to light. Aside from that, I wanted to have really nice teeth for really long, so it, it was kind of a double whammy. And I decided to get some braces. <laughs> Believe it or not, but I used literally to the last 10 euro of my savings for this, all the social benefit allowances I stacked up over that whole few month period. And I got them installed. Now, I feel a bit different. They are still hard to get used to, but it feels like the right thing to do. However, a caveat to this is since due to having them done it here in Ireland through really good Polish dentist in Dublin, I have to stay in this country for the next two years with regular dental visits for every four to five weeks. So my plans have kind of gone out the window of wanting to travel, etc., or move abroad even. And I'm stuck here for the next two years, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Honestly, it's it's fine. If, if things are meant to be, they're meant to be. But that kind of turns my plans of wanting to have a camper van as well. You see, I was looking at buying and either paying a mortgage, paying it off, or just simply borrowing money. But there's no point since I cannot insure in Ireland. Legally, most places here in Ireland will not insure anybody under 25 who has a camper van or a vintage vehicle as well. There's a one or two insurance companies that allow it if you're 23. However, you need to have a full driving license for five years with no issues. I don't have that either. So yeah, if I want to get a camper van in Ireland and insure in Ireland, there is no real way for me to do it until I'm 25 years of age, <laughs> which is a bit ridiculous in my opinion. Like, I get it. If you have a sports car, a tuner car, heavily modified car, whatever, yeah, you're gonna be a bit more risk because you have more power and you're gonna be more cocky, more arrogant. But this is a camper van, you know, the max speed can go on a motorway is like 90 kilometers an hour, most of them. If you're having like a sprinter van, yeah, sure, it can go faster, but it's no racing machine, it's just a camper. So that really blew my mind completely. And I haven't looked into it. Reading some forums and then consulting some people, the only real way to do it is if you import a camper van from mainland Europe, let's say France, the Netherlands, Germany, Poland, etc., any of these countries, and bring it over here, have it insured in the European countries, and then go back every year to get it uh, tested for whether it's roadworthy. These sets are called different things in different countries, and do that every single year. It does work out a bit more expensive since you know you have to get there every year, but you can make a small holiday out of it. And that's their only real way to do it. But you know, without having people there to inspect the vehicle first, it's a bit of a gamble. And if you're gonna fly over there every single time to check out a camper, 
it's a headache in itself. So that idea is kind of postponed for the time being. What can you do? And now going a bit more about my personal side of things. It's going to be mainly focused on the lack of motivation, which people in my family, friends and relations would have probably realized. Since probably Christmas time, I'm not sure the exact date, but I have seemingly become less motivated with most things in life. And it's a bit strange. This is one of the reasons why I haven't really uploaded or created any videos or photos in last while. I feel like creation is such a powerful process and you can really reach out to people through it, through the words you speak, through the images you share. And I didn't want to reach out when I was in my best form, when I wasn't creating from my heart, when it was a chore, a job. So I decided to essentially postpone all of the creation process. And the only reason why I'm making this video is because it's a sit down video, very easy, and I don't have to think much about it. I'm just, oh, yes. I haven't been shooting much in the past few months. I have half a roll of film done and a few photos of family, etc. But that's it, nothing more creative than that, which is very strange. I have been learning more editing pro uh, programs like After Effects. And the strange thing is, which hasn't happened to me before, is when I've burned out previously, I essentially stopped photography, stopped doing this and did other things and I was fine. In this instance though, I'm not motivated to cook, to bake, to exercise much, to even read. That's just mind boggling to me. There was, I was backpacking most of summer and essentially had a book with me, reading every time I could, reading in hostels, even when I was working full time here after coming back. I was reading every single afternoon with my little salt lamp. It was just a part of my routine. It was something that I enjoyed. But now, it's something that I just don't feel drawn to, which is super, super strange. It's more like I have to make myself read, which is which is not what you want in life, honestly. If you're making yourself to do something, you need to change things up. It's just one of those ways. You can't fight the current. There are a few things that I've continually been enjoying and been helping me. One of them is gaming. <laughs> and I guess this goes back to nostalgia when I had a PlayStation 3 and all my friends on these older games. But gaming on a PC and having such a huge community base, having people that it's talk to you every week with a microphone, seeing what they're up to, seeing their life story, you know, it's kind of brought me back to enjoying the little moments and being not so self-isolated. As this is one thing that don't, they don't really tell you about being unemployed. Since you personally, I didn't spend any of my money in cafes, restaurants, going out, anything like that. I kept it. So I would essentially leave my house once a week maybe if, that, if that's it, go shopping with my mother. I met up with friends once, that was one time in all these months. And it's not that I don't want to go out, it's just not having the motivation, not having the reason why. I've also sold my bike in this time to make up for lacking funds for my braces. Yeah, my bike's gone. And I've been loving to cycle for so long. I have all the accessories still here. There is one thing that I've been really enjoying that I haven't really mentioned yet. Jewelry making. You see, I have a second Instagram called Art by Michael J. And I essentially take gemstones and crystals and use pure copper to wrap them properly. And I have quite a few made, probably 30-ish. And I have more to go. And I've just been making them, learning the craft if they're not good enough up to par, I scrap them and remake them again. And something that has kept my mind busy, kept, kept my hands busy and yeah, it kind of allows me to put my love and passion into something that somebody else can enjoy for their life. If you want to check that out, well, I'll leave a link to it in the description. I, all the products are there. It's a late March and if you're familiar or watch the news at all, you probably know the epidemic that's going on and I'm not going to get into it at all because there is no point. You've heard it all, you've seen it all and if you do want to get dig in it or see what some people say about it, for instance, cover up, 
the patents, the way it was released, Bill Gates Foundation, etc. You can definitely look that up. But what I'm gonna say is, I've been self-isolated or essentially quarantined for the past week, which means that I cannot go to work and I'm back at, back in my house. Yeah. I've worked for one week in this new job and now I'm back. And it's pretty, you know, feels like I'm going back downhill again <laughs> to being just left at home. But I also kind of brought into mind other jobs I could do. I'm very skilled in editing photos and videos, be that film photography, can Photoshop, Lightroom, etc. I know a lot of programs. I figured I might as well start doing remote editing. If everybody is interested, hit me up. Like I won't charge a lot, but it's definitely gonna keep me busy and that's one of the things that's really important in life. Just keep doing what you like doing and forget about the stresses of everything else. I think that covered most of it. It's been a long video and I've disclosed quite a lot of things that even my family doesn't know. Hope that you found some of this info useful. If you have any suggestions to let's say camper van issues or if you want to meet up for a coffee, just hit me up. I'm definitely up for it. Anyways, I'll see you sometime this year. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.